a day? I mean, do we have to spend a lot of time looking at our books or is it something that we can outsource? Look, it's a, uh, you, you, you can outsource this, uh, these things, but we, we always say if you outsource, it doesn't necessarily mean you are out of trouble. Then you don't have to look at your books on a regular basis. Because what, what, what destroyed many practitioners is that they outsource their books and they forget about them. And that gives uh, uh, many of your bookkeeper a chance to do what they like with your books. As you can see, what we are doing here in your attorney's bookkeeping, we, we are not doing uh, intense bookkeeping wherein you have to know almost everything. What we are doing is uh, giving you a basic understanding of your books so that it enables you that even if you have outsourced your bookkeep, your, your accounting, we always say give yourself a time, give yourself an, a, a time, sit on your books, try to see if there are no suspicious transactions in your books. And if there are certain things you don't understand, you are able to start asking your bookkeeper questions. And I can tell you, as soon as you start asking your bookkeeper questions, they become uh, very careful because they know that you are at least able to see something. If things are not right, you will be able to see. And if you, you suspect that certain things are not uh, going well, but you can't pinpoint what is it, you are able to go for second opinion and say to somebody, please check my books. Is everything right here? And people are able to check, tell you if something is right or wrong. But go to second opinion for somebody that your bookkeeper does not know, does not have a relationship with your bookkeeper, so that they can give you honest opinion on your book, on your books. So that's what we always advise to uh, to bookkeepers sorry, not bookkeepers, but to practitioners, but do not leave your books entirely to your bookkeepers. You will open your eyes and you find out that millions went out of your trust account. And remember, that's very important. If one day you wake up, you find out that your bookkeeper took three to four million out of your trust account, you are expected on the same day that you find out somebody took four million out of your trust account, you are expected to transfer four million from your business account into your trust account to cover that trust deficit. The fact that your bookkeeper cleaned you is not an excuse. You will still be uh, uh, prosecuted by the legal practice council for being negligent. So it's always your responsibility it's always your obligation to make sure that your books are in order at all times. It's not going to be an excuse to say, I didn't see my bookkeeper doing it. That's negligence and you will be prosecuted. So please uh, check your books. If you need to check them at least once or twice in a month, but please make sure that you are up to date with your book. Don't just work and work because Working hard without take, checking your books doesn't make you a good legal practitioner. Okay. Now, let's quickly look at question number four. Let's quickly look at question number four. You will see question number four uh, uh, is the one that everybody has been saying we need to look at it. Can we finish the last part of question six from the last night, please? Okay. We'll go, we'll go to that, uh, Z. we'll go to that. Let's look at question number four. You are required to prepare the trust bank statement from your practice as at the 8th of February 2018, and the following information is provided. Reconciliation statement as at the 1st of January 2018. And then you call balance per bank statement 64739, less outstanding EFT payments 287 for 500 and 293 for 1250. Add outstanding deposit 30,000, balance per cash book 92989. 
And then you've got your trust cash book for February 2018. On the debit side there of your trust cash book, you've got a balance of 92989, and then you've got those deposit there. Deposit for 6843-1809217 and 8639. And then you go to the credit side. You've got the EFT payments number 294 for 27212, uh, payments number 295, 296, 297, and payments number 298 for an amount of uh, 292,929 rents. That's question number four. Anyone who can share that question number four on the screen? Uh, people are requesting that you share it there on the screen. Can you also please share it? And uh, those who don't have, I was informed that if you go to your e-leader under resource, you should be able to find those ends out there. Please uh, go there uh, later when you are done with the classes, download it there and print it out. So anyone who can share it on the screen, please. Uh, assist those ones that say they don't have it. Okay, it's loading there. There is a question there. There is a question there. Uh, okay, there is a question there. to close it okay you'll, you'll, you'll print it from there and then you've got EFP, EFT payments number 28 in the amount of 2,929 rents and then you've got balance there of 90,633 rent and then you've got the bank statement for February 2018 and then you also have the balance there 64739 and then EFT payments number 295 for 1720 deposit 30,000 rand EFT payments, and then you've got all those transactions, and then uh, you've got then you've got an unpaid stop order, 2186. Unpaid stop order in the amount of 2186. Just want to quickly check something here. Okay. Okay, now additional information payments 293 was incorrectly entered in your cash book as 1250. The prepare the following supplementary cash book for February 2018 and the bank reconciliation statement as 28th of February 2018. Now, I want us to look at this uh, transaction. And then let's try and work on this transaction uh, together and see how do you attempt this one. Now, I'll, I'm going to read that question again right from the top. It says the reconciliation statement as at the 1st of January 2018. Balance as per bank statement. I want you to go into your bank statement and tell me if you can see that balance there of 64739. Can you go into your bank statement and tell me if you can see that balance there? Yes. 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 You can see that balance there in your cash book and in your bank statement. And this is what I want you to do. You will see on that value, I just marked it off like that, both at the top and the bottom. Just mug it off like that and leave it for now. Just mug it off like that and leave it for now. Now let's look at the, the next transaction. It says that less outstanding EFT payments, number 287. Let's look at that EFT payments, number 287, in our bank statement and tell me if you can see Payments number 287. No, it's not no. no. Can't see it there. You can't see it there. Yes, yes, yes. 
If you don't see the that's good back. Uh, which question are we dealing with? Question number four. Number four, thank you. Yes. Now, if you don't see it anywhere else, it means it's only appearing there. Just encycle it like that. Just encycle it like that. Now, what is happening is that the transactions that you are encycling, it means they are outstanding. And therefore, because they are outstanding, those are the transactions that you need to reconcile later on when you do our reconciliation. But those that you mark off, like the first one that you mark off in both accounts, you don't need to reconcile those transactions, you don't need to work on them. So I want us to proceed with this exercise and then we come back again to record it in our answers and see how far we have gone. The next one is uh, EFT payments number 293. Do you see that payment anywhere else? 293. Do you see that payment in your bank statement? Yes, no. it's on the yes. bank statement. Yes. Yes. It's on the bank statement. Yes. Is, the, is the amount the same? Is the value the same? No. No, no it's not mm -hmm. the same. Because you'll see there at the top is 1250, and then mm. in the bank statement is 1205. Yes. Now, I want us to do just do. Anywhere that you can, any way that you can do it, you can do it. You see how I marked it. I just underline it and I do a star uh, just after it. Just underline it and do a star. If I underline it and do a star like that, it means I need to do the adjustment. That tells you that that amount differs. That is why you need to do that adjustment. And we said. When you do that adjustment, it tells you that the amount in the uh, in your cash book is not the same as in the bank statement, and therefore you do you need to do the adjustment. So just underline it and put a star like that and leave it for now. Let's go to the next transaction. Add outstanding deposit thirty thousand rands. Let's look for that thirty thousand rands and tell me. If you can see that 30,000 rands anywhere again. It's not there. It's Check the it in the bank statement. Yes, in the bank statement, in the metal there, you see that? Yeah, yeah. Yes, again, mark it off, line across it, just mark it off. Line across it, it appears in both accounts, just mark it off. And then balance as per cash book, 92989. Do we see that balance per cash book on 92989 in your cash book? Yes, it is there yes. as balance. Brought on, on yes, in your, if you look at the trust cash book for February 2018, on the left hand side, the first transaction there is that same amount. You see that? Yes. That yes. Is, and again, yes. just. Just draw a line across it. Yeah, hello? Come again. I'm saying that amount of 92989, you'll see it in your class cash book for February 2018. If you look on the left hand side, which is the debit side, it says balance. And you'll see, you'll see it says 92989. And because it's appearing there twice, then just draw a line across it, mark it off. Mark it off. I see uh, BN. Just show your in, your initials here. BN is raising the hand. You said it appears twice. Where else does it appear apart from the cash book? Look at here. Uh, you see, you saw the thirty thousand run that we dealt with. Yes. Under thirty thousand run, it says balance as per cash book. You see it. Yes. Says nine two nine eight nine. Oh yes, okay, thanks. Yeah, nine two nine eight nine. So what we are doing here is that remember what I said earlier on to say, <clears throat> when you do your bank reconciliation statement, you compare the transactions in your cash book and your bank statement, 
and see which transactions are already through your bank statement but not through your cash book, and then you record them in your cash book. And which one are it through your cash book but not yet in your bank statement, and then you record them where they do not appear. And in the process, you also find that there are errors, and then you deal with the errors. That's exactly what we are doing now. We are identifying outstanding transactions and those that are not out outstanding. So those that are not outstanding are the ones that we are marking off. Those that are outstanding, those that we are encycling, those that we are encycling, it's either we are going to record them in the cash book, supplementary cash book, or we are going to record them in our bank reconciliation statement. So we are basically doing this exercise so that when we answer that question, it's going to be much easier because now you will know which transaction you, are, you need to uh, record and in which account. Because now you know I deal with those that have encycled or those that I have marked a star where I need to do the adjustment. And then Kanisa says, why, where does 92989 appears on the statement? 92989. Kanisa, I want you to follow me. We started with the amount of 64739, right? Just only look at the top, 64739, and then we mark it off. And then we had 500 rand, which is EFT number 287. We had cycled it. And then we go to uh, payment number 293 for 1250. That is where we need to do the adjustment. And then it says add outstanding deposit. You have 30,000 rand. We mark it off because there is 30,000 rand in the bank statement. And then it says balance as per cash book 92989. And if you look at that 92989, the account just under it, 92989, there it says trust cash book for February 2018. And then I'm saying, look on the left side of that trust cash book for February 20, 2018. When you look on the left hand side, it says balance. And then it says 92989. And I'm saying, that 92989 is the same as the one that we have just re read before we got into the trust cash book. The striking off means the transactions have reconciled themselves. You don't need to reconcile them. That's what the striking off means. Okay. While they're on the trust cash book, still on the left hand side, we have there. We, now we oh sorry now we go into our trust cash book. Let's start with the left hand side, which are the deposit. The balance of nine two nine eight nine we have dealt with it. Now we've got a deposit of six eight four three. Can you look for that deposit of six four eight three in your bank statement and tell me if you can see it there? Yes, you can yes. see it. Yes. Yes. Then strike it off. Line across it in both in both in both books. Just a line across it in both books. Strike it off. The next deposit is one double eight zero nine. Do you see that deposit in your bank statement? Yes. 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 Again, strike it off. In both in both instances, both in the cash book and the bank statement. And now you have a deposit of two one seven. Advocate. Okay. I'm so sorry to disturb. No uh, problem. So when on top, when we were dealing with um, the lists, the outstanding EFT payments. Yes. Um, those values, uh, the value of six two nine eight nine and one seven five zero. Yes. Did we okay. skip those? Yeah, I will explain them to you just now. Before you answer this question, I'm going to explain that to you. Okay, thank you. Because there are some that don't look like them yet, so I'm going to explain all of them to you at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Now, the deposit of 217, do you see that deposit anywhere in your bank statement? Yes. 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 Again, mark it off. Mark it off or strike it off. And then you've got a deposit of 8639, do you see that in your bank statement? No. 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 No? Yes. And cycle it. 
Just uncycle it. Just uncycle it and leave it. Now let's go. While we are still under our trust cash book, let's go to the credit side. There's EFT payments of 294. You see that EFT payments number 294 in your bank statement? Yes. Yes. Is the value the same? Yes. 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 If the value is the same, then strike it off in both instances. Then we have got EFT number 295. You see that yes. EFT number 295 in your bank statement? Yes. yes. Is the value the same? Yes. yes. You can also strike it off in both cases. And then you've got EFT number 296. Yes. Yes, it's there. Is, there. is the value the same? Yes. 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 And strike it off again. And then EFT number 297. It's there. It's there. It's there. Same, amount. Same amount. Then strike it off again. Yeah. And then you've got uh, EFT number 298. It's not there. No. It's not there. Then and cycle it. And cycle it and leave it. That balance there of 90633, you don't, that is the balance. Don't confer, uh, compare it against anything, including that total of 127497. Don't compare those against anything. I will we'll come back to them just now. Now, that means you are done with our trust cash book for February 2018. Let's go into our bank statement for February 2018. Advocate. Yes. EFT payment 294, what did you say about it? EFT payments number? 294. 294. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Look at EFT payments number 294. Check it in your bank statement and tell me if you can't see it. Can you see it in your bank statement? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And if it appears in your bank statement, just drag it off. Okay, thanks. Sorry, advocate. Okay, yes. My apologies, I got cut off, man. Which document are you referring to? Uh, question number four. We are on question number four. Question number four. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, of the same questions that were in the attachment? Yes, yes, of the same questions, yes. Okay, thank you. Now, um, let's go into our bank statement. You'll see our bank statement. Let's start from the top. Which transaction did we not mark or do not do anything? It's the unpaid stop order. Um, unpaid, stop order. unpaid stop order. Yes. Then encycle it. That means it only appears there. It won't appear anywhere else. Just encycle it. Now, we have encycled anything that needed to be encycled, isn't so? We have right on the whole of the statement, EFT 293 and unpaid stop order. Uh, 293, 293, we remember 293 is there at the top, it's just that value is not the same, eh, Jay? Mm -hmm. Just check, just check at the top there. There was uh, EFT number 293 in the value of 1250, and then in the bank statement it's 1205. That's why we said, just, just make a star next to it. That tells you that you need to do the adjustment on that because it went through, but the value is not the same. And you say that's why you are going to do the adjustment. Okay. Now, what we are going to do now is that we are only going to concentrate on the accounts that, on the transaction that we have either encycled or those that we have put a star next to them where they say we need to do the adjustment. Those are the transactions that we are going to concentrate on when we record this bank reconciliation statement. Any other statement that we have marked off, we are not going to look at that. It, it means those have reconciled themselves. Now, earlier on there was a question there to say, when you look there at the top on the far right, there is, from the top, there is an amount of 64739. Underneath that, there is 1750, there is 62989. 
And when you look into your bank statement for February 2018, you'll, look, you'll see that on the far right, almost all the transactions on the far right, we did not compare them against anything. Why are we not comparing that? Is because those transactions, if you look at them, they are just the subtotals. So they are all of them. They are the subtotals. I always try to, uh, uh, I always try to make it easier to say, <clears throat> when you compare, compare those transactions that are narrated only. Those that are not narrated are basically subtotals. Just ignore them. If you start from the top there, 64739, it says it's balance as per bank statement. The 500 trend, it says, is that uh, EFT payments number 283. And the 1250 is EFT number 293. Sorry, 293, the other one was 287. Now, if you look at the 1750, it's on the far right there. It does it, it, nothing explain to you what it is. And that's why I'm saying that is your subtotal including the 62989, that's your subtotal. You see it's not narrated in any way. And then you get outstanding deposit, 30,000, balance per cash book, 92989. You have worked on all those. And then you go into your bank statement. The first transaction there is narrated as balance, 64739. And the rest of those other, Underneath that, you will say they are not narrated in any way. Those are the subtotals. That's why I always say, don't work on the subtotals. If you don't understand what is a subtotal, just remember, I only record the narrated, I only compare the narrated transactions. Okay. And the issue regarding the transactions where we have made, I've said, made a star on the transaction that it's the same transaction, but the value is not the same. That means somebody made an error and you need to adjust that error. If you look, for instance, at EFT number 293, there on the top is 1250. But in your bank statement is 1205. That tells you it is the same payment, but the value is not the same. That's why we say somebody made an error and we need to correct that error when we record these transactions. Now, let's go and answer this transaction. Let's throw those accounts again, your bank statement and your supplementary cash book. Let's throw them and then start recording that transaction there. Uh, excuse me, uh, advocate. Yes, there yes. Is, uh, yes, there is a, a value this 500 less yeah. outstanding F payment of 9,287. No, that's the that's 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 EFT number. The value is 500. Is actually under the one, two, okay, that is the value. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Hmm. Okay. Let's record those accounts there. Supplementary cash book for February 2018 and your bank reconciliation statement. Bank reconciliation statement as at 28 of February 2018. Your supplementary cash book for February 2018 and your bank reconciliation statement as at 28 of February 2018. Now, we said, when you start doing this, you must always start by recording the balances. Now, let's get the balance for our supplementary cash book. How much will be the balance for supplementary cash book when you are looking at that statement? 92989. How much? 92989. Nine two nine eight nine nine zero six double three. Which one? Nine zero six double three. Nine zero six nine zero six double three is the correct one. Now, let's quickly explain the nine two nine eight nine. Now, the nine two 
Look into your trust cash book for February 2018 on the left hand side. You will see that the opening balance was how much? 9289. That is the opening balance when you start your month of February. That means it was the closing balance at the end of January. Now, remember, we do your bank reconciliation at the end of the month. Now, we are doing our reconciliation at the end of February. Can we still use the balance that we got at the beginning of February? A while in the meantime, we had a lot of transactions during the month of the month. Can we still use that balance as at the balance at the end of, uh, uh, end of uh, February? No, no, no. Oh, no. can't. Correct. So that is the balance that was there at the end of January. Now we are at the end of February. The, end, the balance at the end of February, you just go under the February transactions. And then the, under the February transaction, at the bottom, the balance there is what you record there when you do your supplementary cash book. And at the bottom there, under the the February transaction in your supplement in your trust cash book is 90633. And that balance there is a debit balance. Then you go on the left hand side of your supplementary cash book and simply write balance. 90633. Just on the debit side. Of your supplementary cash book on the left hand side simply write balance nine zero six double three on the debit side on the left hand side of your supplementary cash book nine zero six double three and then we need the balance for our bank statement let's say here yeah, balance as per bank statement balance per bank statement and how much is our balance per bank statement? 83282. 83282. Now say balance per bank statement 83282. Balance per bank statement 83282. Now the balance per bank statement is always when you look into your bank statement there for February 2018, and you look at the amount on the far right, those are your balances, those are your subtotal, your balances, the amounts on the far right. Now, to get your balance on your bank statement, you always take the last transaction on those balances on the far right. And the last transaction there is 83282. You always take that as the balance per bank statement. That's where you get your balance per bank statement. That's correct, Friedonik. That's the amount 83282. Now we've got our balances for our supplementary cash book as well as our bank reconciliation statement. Now let's go to the transactions. Now we are going to Look at the transactions that we have encircled and those that we have marked, and then we record them in our books. Now, let's start from the top. What is the first transaction that is either encircled or marked? Outstanding EFT of 500 rands. The EFT of 500 rand. And number one. And EFT is what is made by you, isn't so? The EFT payment is what is reflecting in your cash book. That tells you this EFT of 500 rand is outstanding in your bank statement. That means you need to record it in the bank statement. The, the 83282 is a positive balance in your bank statement. It's a positive balance in your bank statement. Remember we said, if it's a negative balance, we'll tell you that it's a negative balance. If we don't say it's a negative balance, that automatically tells you it's money available. Therefore, it's a positive balance in your bank statement. If you are using the bank statement layout, you are going to credit your bank statement. 
But because you are using the standard, just write balance of pen statement, and then we write that amount on the far right. Okay. Now, this 500 rand, uh, somebody says you debit your bank statement. And that's correct. You are going to list it in your bank statement. Bandile is correct. You're going to go to your bank statement and say less EFT number 287. Less EFT 287 in the amount of 500 rands. Less EFT 287 in the amount of 500 rands. And then you say 83282 minus 500 rand. How much do you get? 82782. 82782. Eight, 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 okay. 82782. Two. Total. 82782. Correct. That is how you're going to write that subtotal there. 82782. That's your subtotal in your bank reconciliation statement. Now we are done with that 500 trends. Now, let's look at let's look at um, the next one, which is marked with a star. And that is that EFT number 293. And then you'll see that that EF2 number 293 is reflecting in your bank statement as 1205. Therefore, in your cash book is 1250. And we say somebody made an error. And we all agree so far that this is a firm error. And because it's a firm error, it must be fixed in your supplementary cash book. Correct. Now, this is an EFT payment. It's not a deposit. It's not what we are receiving. It's an EFT payment. It's what has been paid out. Now, remember, the bank statement value is always correct. Yes. Now, the question is, which value of this transaction are we going to record on the credit side of our supplementary cash book? The one two zero five. Correct. You have to. And we debit the. Two nine three two nine three adjustment. One two zero five. And the other one we are going to. Debit. Two nine three. Adjustment. And then we are going to debit. One two five zero five zero. Yes, EFT number two nine three adjustment. EFT number two nine three adjustment. And then you debit, so you credit your supplementary cash book with one two zero five, and then you debit EFT number two nine three adjustment. Debit 1250. That's how you record that transaction there. That's how you record that transaction there. Okay. Now, let's proceed. That, that means we are done there on top. Let's go into our trust cash book. Debit one two debit one two five zero. Yes, debit one two zero five zero and credit one two zero five. You're correct there. The man the questions are coming from the attachments, not the manual. It's question number four on the attachments, not the manual. Hello? Okay. Now, let's go into our trust cash book for February 2018. Let's start with the debit side. What is the first transaction on the debit side, either encycled or marked? 
8639. The deposit of 8639. Yes. And all of us can say that that deposit is recorded on the debit side of your cash book. And it does not appear in your bank statement. That means where do you record this deposit? The bank reconciliation. Bank reconciliation. Bank reconciliation. Bank reconciliation statement. Bandile says credit your bank recon. Correct. You are going to add it. So you add outstanding deposit. Add outstanding deposit. Add outstanding deposit in the amount of 8639. 8639, and then you say 82782 plus 8639. How much do you get? Somebody says 91. Advocate, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing anything. You are not hearing anything. Now, what I'm saying there is that let's look at that deposit of 8639 in your cash book. You see that? What do you trust cash book for February 2018? You see that? See. Yeah. Are we together then? No, advocate. Do you, can, you see the trust cash book? Yes, we do. What? Give me the, the value of the first transaction on the debit side of your trust cash book. No, give, give it to me. Don't wait for them to give it to me. I want you to give it to me. Advocate. Yes. I think his connection is bad. That's why yeah. he can't hear you. Okay. And that's a, that's a different thing there. Okay, let's proceed then. Now, we are done with the deposit of 8639. We all agree that that deposit must be recorded in your bank statement and you are going to add it because it's a receipt, something that you have received in your uh, in your cash book. Yes. Now let's go to the credit side. We are done with the transaction. Where is it? Cash book. Yes. Where is it? Cash book. Okay. Let's go to the credit side. Eight receipts. Now on the credit side of your cash book, what is the first transaction either entitled or marked that you? Uh, that we have not, uh, that we need to work on. Yeah, that's EFT. number 298. Of 2929. Yeah, 298 with the value of 2929. Yes. And that is a payment, isn't it so? Yes. That's what is paid out. That payment is not yet through the bank statement. Yes. That payment yes. is not yet through the bank statement. We need to bring that. The question is, now that you see it is on the credit side of your cash book, now you need to record it in your bank statement. Are you going to debit or credit your bank statement? Are you going to add it or are you going to less it? Less it. Less, less outstanding payments. All right. Less outstanding payment. Yes. Yes. That's outstanding payment in the amount of 2929. And then you say 91421 minus 2929. How much do you get? Less, you're correct, Manisha? 88492. 88492. 88492, correct. That was in our uh, cash pool. What do you mean? What is the diagnosis? Because Mukachu, it's a good thing. Please, please, your papers so that we can see. Okay. What? Those are the transactions okay. in your bank reconciliation okay. statement. Less that outstanding payment of 2929. And then you say 914. Uh, 
Substance. Minus 2929, you've got 884, uh, 88492. Can you move it up, uh, advocate? Uh, Thank you. That's one answer. 8492. Mm. Can everyone mute their mics? We want to be able to hear you clearly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tumani, please mute. Elia, please, please switch off your mic. Okay, that's your supplementary case. And then that's your, uh, how do you call it, reconciliation okay. statement. Okay. Okay, please, please, wherever you are, try to mute yourself. Yes, because I ask you a question. We've already asked. Can you please mute them? Please mute yourself because if you don't mute yourself again, you you start talking, and then we can hear everything that you are saying. Please mute yourself. So in terms of the 293, we said it was a first error. So why are we debiting the one to open? Look, the, the voice there, it's, uh, it's uh, I can't hear. I can hear somebody saying something, but I can't hear what has what been said. OK, I'll type in the chat. Okay. Joanne, you are, you are right. You can use your the, the brackets. That's that's absolutely correct. That's absolutely correct. Please let's try and mute ourselves there. Now, before we answer the last one there, I forgot to to uh, to talk to you about it, that one. You will see the last one there that says 2186, it says unpaid stop order. So it should not have been unpaid stop order, it should have been a uh, reversed client's payment. Okay. No. Reversed client payment. Sorry, I forgot to, to mention it earlier on. Not unpaid stop order, but reversed client payment. reverse client payment may we please go back to payments number 293 according to your paper payment number 293 there at the top we are saying there if you look at that payments number 293 at the top there it's got a value of 1250 that is what it what that payments 293 say but i'm saying Check the same payment in your bank statement. Check the same payment in your bank statement, EFT payments number 293. You will see that in your bank statement has got a value of 1205. It's got a, a, a value of 1205. Now I am saying this is the same payment but the value that you recorded in your cash book is not the same with what the bank has paid. And we said, we always accept that the bank statement value is correct and the cash book value is incorrect. That means the 1250 is incorrect and the 1205 is the correct one. And because it's a payment, and a payment in your cash book is recorded on the credit side. That's why you took 
the correct payment was 1205. You recorded it on the credit side of your supplementary cash book. And that incorrect one, you debited your supplementary cash book with the incorrect one. That's how you deal. That is the one that we said earlier on, we say that is a thin error in respect of a payment. Uh, yes, Karim has answered you, Pilari, there. Reverse client payments. That is to indicate it at reverse client's payments. Uh, sorry, Advocate. Yes. Um, with greatest respect, Advocate, um, can you kindly ask that your lecturers um, I mean, your lectures be uploaded on the eLeader website. It will really be great, helpful that one go through them over and over again so yeah. that we yeah. all understand, please, kindly. No, it, it will definitely be uh, loaded. I'll speak to uh, Zukiswa as soon as we are done here to make sure that she, she loads uh, everything on, on the eLeader. Advocate, yeah. just like to find me, uh, I learned about the certain term. Is this one two five zero this will be one two zero five what is yeah. called invasion yes it's one two five zero this will be one two zero five correct in your guide is it called invasion that those figures was they called i can't hear them. in the guides yes what they call invasion yes yes okay thanks yeah yeah okay now, uh, let's look at the last one there that uh, has been uh, encycled, and I said it's a reversed uh, client's uh, payment. That the reversed client payment, and then it, that is the payment that uh, you receive from your client has now been reversed. Remember, when you receive a payment, you will debit your cash book and you credit your bank statement. Now, that credit in your bank statement has been reversed by the bank. That means your bank statement has now been debited. And that debit in your bank statement does not correspond with anything in your cash book. That means it becomes your duty now to record it. The question is, are you going to debit or credit your supplementary cash book with that transaction? You're going to credit. 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 Correct. Reversed EFT. Reverse EFT in the month of 2186. Now you will see, thank you, uh, Karim, you credited correct, Manisha, as in being in Bali, that's correct. Now, we that was the last transaction that we had to record there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Atika? Yes. I was just wondering, um, had it stayed the same, had it stayed the stop order, would it have a different implication? Uh, stop order. Yes, it will have a difference. Uh, let me just see. Unpaid stop order. Yes, it will. It will have. Please just explain that if if I'm not uh, if I'm not disturbing you. Because if it's unpaid stop order and that stop order has been reversed, yeah. stop order to stop order to start with, it will be a credit in your supplement in your cash book, and it will be a debit in your bank statement okay and when the bank reverse see the bank is going to credit your bank statement and then you will have to take that transaction and then debit your cash book oh okay thank you yeah sir. that's what difference is going was going to be yes okay now we have recorded those transactions i want us to everything has been recorded let's go to uh, let's go and balance our uh, our books let's balance our books Let's start with our supplementary cash book. Let's add together the debit side. And tell me how much is the total that you get when you add together the debit side? 91883. 91883. Yeah. That is what we get. Mm -hmm. And then you say 91883 minus the debit side. 
8849. How much? 88492. And then you say balance here on the credit side 88492. And then you go into your bank reconciliation statement there. The last transaction 88492. And then you say balance, balance as per cash book. Balance. Yes, now you will see your cash book and your bank statement now balances. Both of them has got the same amount, 88492 as the balance in both your supplementary cash book and in your uh, bank reconciliation statement. That is how you deal with this type of a transaction. You simply get this transaction and you start doing the marking off and, the, and, the, and then cycling. Uh, advocate to do the marking off and the recycling. Hello. Sorry, advocate. Yes. Um, so could you kindly please repeat the last um, transaction? Well, the last transaction there, uh, that the reverse, the, uh, the reverse, the the yes, EFT, yes, yes, yes. What I'm saying with that transaction is that, uh, that that is a reversed payment by uh, from your client in other words initially your client paid you isn't so yes. when the client pays yes. you you will debit your cash book and then you will credit your bank statement that is yes. when, when the client pays you but then after that after that debit in your cash book and a credit in your bank statement the bank realized later to say, no, we are not going to honor this payment. And then they reverse that transaction. When the bank reverses the transaction, the bank now, because they initially credited, credited you, now the bank is going to debit you. One day you get your bank statement, you realize that that credit in your bank statement is now a debit in your bank statement. Now, yes. if it's a debit in your bank statement, now you need to transfer that debit to your cash book, and therefore, in your cash book, it's going to be a credit. That's why we have credited your supplementary cash book with that value. Okay, thank you, advocate. Okay. Now, is it, is it, is it area Mohara? Is it is easier this way? <laughs> Okay, that is basically how you. Okay, somebody is uh, just try to mute yourself there. There's noise coming from your side. Is it EM? I'm not sure what the full name for EM. Please mute yourself. I think it's uh, Mama Chokoto. Okay, thank you. Yes, Emma, thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, that is how you deal with that type of a statement. But I want us now to quickly do a different exercise. I want us to do a different exercise on the bank reconciliation, and I want us to do a business bank. Okay. Okay, I wanted us to do a business bank reconciliation statement with an overdraft. So that we can see what is the difference between your trust bank reconciliation and a business bank reconciliation statement with an overdraft balance. Now, I want us to look at question number, let me see which one. Uh, let's look at question number number eight. Let's look at question number eight. Thank you, Marato. Number eight. That's what Marato says we should look at. Let's look at question number eight. Now, question number eight says, your business cash book at 30th of June 2015 reflects an overdraft balance of 64722. Now, number one, you are dealing with a business account. 
And number two is it's got an overdraft balance. That simply means it's got a negative balance. Now, remember, this account can reflect a negative balance because it's a business account. A trust account can never reflect a negative balance, even if that negative balance is caused by the interest you will still be prosecuted for that. I'm not sure if I've already explained this to you before. That is the reason why there is already an arrangement with the Legal Practice Council that every legal practitioner that open their trust and business account, there is a form with the bank where you are going to complete and sign and you instruct the bank to say, Please make sure that all my trust bank charges must be debited out of my business account and not trust account. Because if the bank charges are debited from the trust account, your trust account might end up with a negative balance because of the bank charges. And it's not allowed to reflect a, uh, what do you call it? It's not allowed to reflect a negative balance for no reason at all. So please remember to ask that question when you get to the bank to open your trust account. It's very important to remember that. It's not going to be an excuse to say to the legal practice council when you are taken to a task and say it is the bank charges, it is not me. You will still uh, be punished. And then at the end of the year, when you submit your audited records, and then you also submit the value of the interest that you have paid, or your business has paid on behalf of the trust account, and then, uh, yes, all, yes, John, that's correct. All bank, uh, trust bank charges must go via the business account, correct. Now, you are going to submit a statement that indicate how much your bank account has paid in respect of the trust bank charges. Let's say, for instance, the whole trust bank charges for the whole year was 10,000 rands, and that 10,000 rand was paid from your business account. So you will take that 10,000 rands and proof of that payments to the legal practice council when you submit your audited books. And then they'll look at that 10,000 rents and they make their own calculations and see where you cause many transactions are necessary which resulted in more costs and then they will decide whether they are going to give you uh, uh, all the pay you back all the bank charges that you paid or they are going to pay you a certain amount. You might pay 10,000 rand, but that does not guarantee that the Legal Practice Council is going to repay you 10,000 rand. They might pay you 8,000, they might pay you 7, they might pay you 5,000 rand. I don't know how they calculate it, but there's a format that they use to calculate. There are a number of things that they look at to decide how much they are going to repay you. So if they repay you uh, uh, 7,000 rand, unfortunately 3,000 rand must be a loss to the business. So that's how it works. Just be careful there. Advocate. Yes. Okay. Just uh, out of interest, in your own experience, what, what could be the reason why that account should always be on a positive, even when there are not trust activities? Remember, a trust account, you are, you are holding clients' money. So now, if you are holding clients' money, in terms of the Legal Practice Council, your accounts must show at every single second that you are holding sufficient funds to cover your trust creditors. So that is what they want. If for every single sense or second of your practice, you must be having sufficient funds in your trust account to cover all your trust creditors. That's why they don't want it to have a negative balance. Because they say, say how to operate a negative balance. If your client has given you 100,000, that 100,000 must be in your trust account. Okay. So you cannot come back later and tell the client to say, the 100,000 that you gave me 
5,000 rand the bank took it with in, for, for interest. So the client is not going to agree to that because he gave you the money. That's why they say it should not reflect a negative balance. Even the, the, the bank charges should not be debited against uh, that, uh, that, uh, that trust account. Okay. Yeah. Advocate. Thank you. Yes. Advocate. Yes, yes, what I'm listening. Of money must, what type of money must I deposit to the trust account, not the business account? Okay. Is bail, applica bail applications. What, Bail application money, where must I deposit it? Advocate. Yes. Advocate, I'm so sorry to, to disturb. So are the, the questions that they are asking, uh, are those questions that are going to be asked in the exam? Yes, some of these questions you'll find them in the exam, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. let's look at this. Uh, what? Advocate. Yes. Uh, how do I then reimburse myself of the bank charges? Uh, because I suppose the client is supposed to know that uh, any money that is in the bank, the bank will obviously tank, take some, uh, make some charges on that amount. So how do I reimburse myself of the bank charges that I have taken, that are taken from my business account, not in the trust account? Look, unfortunately, there are no many ways where you are going to be able to reimburse yourself. Number one, if the client has given you uh, 100,000, the client expects 100,000 and back with them. Unless if there were those other transactions where you have been, the client has made you to make those transactions that were also not necessarily. So the legal practice council in that instance is the uh, also uh, allow that you tell your clients about the bank charges related to those transactions and then you can get those uh, bank charges deducted from, from the client. But in the normal course of your business of operating, then it's a different story. Let's say, for instance, you, you transfer fees. Let's say your client has given you 100000 and then you transfer fees uh, from the trust into your business account. That is what the client owes you for the job that you have done. Let's say you have done the job out of that 100,000 rand, you have to transfer 70,000 rand into your business account. Now you will see that transfer is going to attack charges. Now the question is, are you going to charge your client those charges that you were charged while transferring that money into your business account? You will not be able to do that. Therefore, if you transfer 70,000 rand, into your uh, into your business account, you get charge, charged 700 rand for that transfer, and we are saying that 700 rand must go through your business account because as soon as you go through your trust account, you are going to have a negative balance of 700 rand in the trust account because now the client's money, 80,000 rand, belongs to the client. Now, who paid this 700 rand? You cannot take it against the client's money. That's why it must go against your business account. And then later, you account to the Legal Practice Council, and then they can decide whether they need to pay you that money back or not. And if they pay you, how much are they going to pay you? So it's not in all instances where you will be able to uh, make your client pay those, uh, those bank charges. Could we, therefore, could we therefore agree that probably that's part of the operational costs of running the, the trust account? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. And there was a question again dealing, uh, asking, uh, whether what type of money should be received in, in trust from your clients. All the monies that you receive from your clients before you do the job must be received in your trust account. If the client gives you a deposit before you do the job, it is client's money and it must be recorded in your trust account. I have seen situations many times, you talked about the bail money. Now, let's say you meet the clients there at court because that's where things happen especially for you candidate attorneys. 
Now, you meet a client there at court, and then he says, please apply for a bail for me. I've got 1,000 rands in my pocket. Now, you say to the client, give me 1,000 rands, I'll apply bail for you. And the client gives you 1,000 rand in hand. Now, the question is, have you applied for a bail when you receive that money from the client? The answer is no. And therefore, if you have not done the job at that time of receiving the money, that tells you that which you have in your hand is trust money. Must be received in your trust account. Okay. Uh, somebody also, Bandila also trying to assist me there. He says activity one and two on the e-leader. Answer the question and what money goes where. Yeah, but that's very important. That is the test. The test is, did I do the job? If not, trust money. If yes, business money. That's the test. Okay. Um... Uh, what's, uh, I guess your charge for services can compensate. Something like that. Something like that. Okay. Now let's go back and read that question there. Your business cash book at 30th of June 2015 reflects an overall balance of 64722. The bank statement balance on the same date is 81086 overdrawn. A comparison of the cash book and the bank statement reveals the following. An EFT payment for 8388 from a client has been reversed by the bank and has not been entered in the cash book. Bank charges of 1809 has not been entered in the cash book. Interest of 713 on the overdraft has not been entered in the cash book. Telegraphic transfer from a client in payments of your fee account of 7980 has not been entered in the cash book. You will see from where we were reading now. Every transaction tells you where that amount has not been recorded. If they say it has not been recorded in the cash book, that means you need to record it in the cash book where it has not been recorded. If they say it has not been recorded in the bank statement, that means you need to record it where they say it has not been recorded, which is in the bank statement. Now, number five, the bank has incorrectly debited your account with 2169. If the bank incorrectly debited your account, that means the bank took money out of your account by mistake. And that money must be returned. Number six, a trust payment of 7301 has been incorrectly paid by the bank from your business account. That's a trust payment. A payment that should have been made out of the trust account. Now it has been made out of this account, which is a business account. And we all agree that somebody made an error. And that error was made by the bank and it must be fixed in or in the bank statement. <clears throat> Where are you reading from, Advocate? <clears throat> I'm reading on question number eight. Question eight of the hands out. Okay. Number seven. A deposit of 5317 has been incorrectly entered in your cash book as 5173. So far, we are... Uh, so far, we know how to deal with the adjustment in respect of the deposit. We know how to deal with the adjustment in respect of a check, or not a check, but a payment. Number eight, EFT payments totaling 6432 have not yet been presented uh, to the bank for payment. That means it's still outstanding. A deposit of 10,000 rand is not reflected on the bank statement. That means you need to record it on the bank statement where they say it's not reflected. Because if they say it's not reflected on the bank statement, that means it's only reflecting in the cash book. 
and EFT payments for 2930 has been incorrectly recorded in the cash book as 2390. That's why you need to do the adjustment again. You are required to prepare the following supplementary cash book for June 2015 and bank reconciliation statement as a 30th of June 2015. Now you need to prepare those two accounts. Now let's 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 uh, uh, draft those two accounts there your supplementary cash book and your bank reconciliation statement. So have those two accounts. I'm sorry, um, advocate, I have to leave the meeting. Thank okay. you very much for tonight. I'll join again tomorrow night. No problem, madam. Thank you. Okay, let's draft those uh, uh, two accounts. Your supplementary cash book and your bank reconciliation statement. Supplementary cash book for June 2015. And then your bank reconciliation statement. Statement as at 30th of June uh, 2015. Your supplementary cash book for June 2015 and your uh, bank reconciliation statement as at 30th of June uh, 2015. So let's uh, look at that and let's try to work on that question together and see how far we can uh, uh, do and then uh, see if we we'll get it right. I can tell you that you might need us to start with a new section, but this section that we are on, you need it. What we have done on the bank recon, you still need to know more. Okay, let's be patient. <clears throat> Now, let's look at that question. Your business cash book at 30th of June 2015 reflect an overdraft balance of 64722. Now, it being in the overdraft. Let's pour, yeah. Okay, I'll answer you just now. Now, we've got an overdraft balance of 64722. We know that an overdraft balance is a negative balance, isn't so? Yes. Now, this negative balance, we need to record it in our supplementary cash book. Are we going to debit or credit the supplementary cash book with the balance? Credit. 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 Correct. Credit there. 64722. Remember, it's a negative balance. Thank you, Mbuyisi. Uh, thank you, Manisha. Thank you, Mbali. Thank you, everybody. Remember, it's an overdraft balance. It's a negative balance. And because it's a negative balance in your cash book, remember, negative is on the credit side. That's why as soon as it becomes a negative balance, it becomes a credit balance. Now, that's why you record it on the right-hand side of your cash book. Now, let's go into our bank statement. You simply say, overdraft payment. So, overdraft balance. Overdraft balance per bank statement in the amount of eight one zero eight six. Overdraft balance per bank statement eight one zero eight six. Therefore, you've got a negative balance uh, in your supplementary cash book. That's why it's a credit balance. And when you go to your bank statement, simply says overdraft balance per bank statement in the amount of uh, 81086. Then you record those balances like that. All of them, they are negative balances. Now, let's go and record those transactions. Uh, advocate. Yes. Uh, can we put the amounts in, in the brackets? 
just to show that they are in the negative form. Yes, you can you can do that. You can do that. I didn't put it in brackets because I narrated it to say overdraft balance. So anywhere, anywhere you can do one of those. Uh, even if you do you did both of them, that's still okay. Yes, uh, Sorry, yeah. I forget. Right. Okay. Oh, um, sorry, uh, is a negative sign, is, would a negative sign suffice? Please do not put a negative sign. Okay. Something, yeah, more especially with your legal practice cancer, they don't want to see that negative sign. Don't put negative. Okay. Okay. And put a negative. And then, let's, now, a comparison of the cash flow and the bank statement reveals the following. An EFT payment for A388 from a client has been reversed by the bank and has not been entered in the cash book. They say to you, an EFT payment has been reversed by the bank and not recorded in your cash book. Now, this is an EFT payments from your client. In which account are you going to record this EFT payments reversal? On the credit side of your supplementary cash book, thank you. Thank you, Bandile. Correct. You are going to credit your supplementary cash book here with this reversed ESP payment. Reversed EFT in the amount of eight double, sorry, eight three double eight. Eight three double eight reversed EFT payments that is in your supplementary cash book. Reverse EFT payments, credit your supplementary cash book eight three double eight. Number two, bank charges of one eight zero nine has not been entered in your cash book. These are the bank charges. Number one, bank charges in the bank statement is what you pay. That means it's a debit in your bank statement. And they say, these bank charges have not been recorded in your cash pool. Are you going to debit or credit your cash pool the bank charges? Credit. credit. Correct, bank charges. Credit here in the amount of 1809. Bank charges credited in your uh, supplementary cash book 1809. Number three, interest of 713 on the overdraft has not been entered in the cash book. What is very important here is that these are the interest on the overdraft. Who normally gets the interest on the overdraft? The bank. The bank gets the interest on the overdraft, correct. That simply means the yes. bank has debited you with this overdraft, isn't so? Yes. Now, therefore, credit on cash book. Bandile, correct. That means now you are going to credit your supplementary cash book. And then you come here and say, on the credit side of your supplementary cash book, overdraft interest. Overdraft interest in the amount of 713. Overdraft interest, 713. Overdraft interest, 713. Now, number four. Telegraphic transfer from a client in payments of your fee account of 7980 has not been entered in the cash book. Now, this is a telegraphic payment from your client, not entered in your cash book. Now, let's start it in our bank statement. Telegraphic transfer. Is it a debit or a credit in our bank statement? It's a credit. It's a credit. credit. It's a credit. That simply means in your debit, the direct opposite, debit, correct, Bani? EFT payments. In the amount of... Seven nine eight zero. Seven nine eight zero. So that seven nine eight zero is debited on your supplementary cash book as an EFT payment. Debit 
your supplementary cash book. Now, let's proceed. The bank has incorrectly debited your account with 2169. Now, we all know so far that that amount should not have been debited, isn't so? Yes. Now, we've got this higher, uh, high overdraft because of, those, of that debit. Now, you tell your bank that you should not have debited my account with this amount and the bank reversed that transaction. Now, the question is, are you going to less this amount or are you going to add it? You're going to add it, so you're going to debit your supplementary cash book. Mm. You're going to add in your bank reconciliation. It's you're going to add in your bank reconciliation it's statement. Are you going to credit your, so you're going to credit oh, your bank I... recon? Yes. Oh, it's a bank error. Okay, yes. I want us, to, I want us to, to, are we going to add it in our bank reconciliation or are we going to less it in our bank reconciliation? Because we must record it in the bank uh, reconciliation. It's either we add it or we less it. If we are not using side, credit bank statement. When you do the bank statement, how much is the subtotal that you are going to get? Seven seven eight nine seven seven eight nine one seven. Seven eight nine one seven. Yes. Did you add it? Less it. You less it. Less if there are no signs. Hmm. If yeah. We're not using now. We added it. Remember, I said. Don't, remember, I said don't put a negative there. I don't want to see that negative. Uh, so less it. You simply want to say on your on your calculator eight one zero eight six without a negative. So if you if no, it's without a negative, if it's without the negative, then you you miss so it. Add the, or, or you minus add it. The overdraft. Yeah, this is this is how you are going to deal with the with a statement which have got an overdraft balance. Okay. You do not put a negative. Now, if you don't put a negative, that simply means you are going to less that amount, isn't so? Mm. You are going to less that amount because as soon as the bank pays that 2169 into your, into your account, okay, as soon as the bank pays that amount of 2169 into your account that has got an overdraft, your overdraft balance is going to go down. Yes. Because your overdraft account is receiving positive balance. Yes. Sorry, guys. Um, advocate. Yes. Yes. Is Zukiswa on? Zukiswa. Uh, can I, can I, may I please, guys, just disturb you, uh, just for a few minutes? Ne? I have a problem here, but I have a complaint. Ne? I'm sorry to have to have to complain here but i've been sending emails and calling the, no, the school and not being assisted i don't have the material that you're using now and like i'm struggling because i'm only listening to you guys and i don't have the material so i've been complaining but i'm not being assisted so i don't know what i can do to be assisted because i have the e-leader but it's not working the site site um the, in the portal, when I press the site, it's not doing anything, it's not opening anything. So, may I kindly be assisted in that matter? Can you next? drop your email so I that we can email it to you? In our, in our can you write your email in the mailbox so that we can email it to you? Let's cut it short. Your email, your name is? Spelele. Spelele. Spelele, what's your email address? It's Sipelele, it's S I. S I. P H E. P H E. No, it's P. P for pot. Yes. H E. H E, yes. L E L E. Yes. Dot V I C. Dot V I C. At gmail.com. Sipelele, please also access the chat. Okay. Sorry? Let the, somebody also uh, posted something there. Mudiri posted something there. Uh, 
Zugi, Zugi's online there. You see Zugi's message there. Yes. Please send an uh, uh, email. That's what she says. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Okay. Let's proceed. Um, let's start there at number five. The bank has incorrectly debited your account with two one six nine. Now, what I am saying is. If you don't put a negative year on the 81086 and then you add the 212 uh, uh, two, uh, to get an amount of about around 83,000 83, some, some, something like that. And I'm saying that 83,000 uh, will be the wrong uh, answer. Because what is happening here is that the bank is paying money back into the account that has got a negative balance. If the bank pays money into this account with a negative balance, whatever the bank pays reduces that negative balance. And therefore, it cannot be added. That means you are going to say less. You don't put a negative you work on it as it is, the narration part is going to change from what you were doing. In other words, as soon as you've got an overdraft balance, every time you receive money into the overdraft balance, the overdraft goes down, and then you are going to say less. Every time you make a payment out of the overdraft, the overdraft is going to go up. That's why every payment that you make out of that overdraft, you are going to say plus or add because that, that payment increases the overdraft. So you need to remember this. You need to be able to do it this way because what happens is that if you put in a negative, Therefore, you need to change the narration. The narration are going to be exactly the same as we are doing when the account, when we are dealing with the trust bank reconciliation. And you will still balance the same way that you will balance. But unfortunately, in terms of your legal practice counsel, they want to see it the way that I'm telling you. They want to see the narrations changing. And then, uh, every time you receive the money and then the overdraft goes down and then you say less. Every time you make a payment, the overdraft goes up and then you say plus. Uh, the, but the bank is debiting. Doesn't that mean the bank is taking money out of the account? Yes, when the bank debited you, when the bank took the money, they took the money out of your account and your account your overdraft increased. But now when we deal with this reconciliation, more especially when we work on, uh, what do you call it? When you work on the standard format, that's basically how you are going to record those transactions. Every time we receive money, we are going to less it because we are reducing the overdraft. Every time we make a payments, we are going to add because it increases the overdraft. I advocate. Yes. I think probably it's much easier for, for other people to understand it as uh, some form of, of you owing. In terms of whatever amount that you put in the bank will be offset by whatever is, is, is in, the, in the bank because you are already in the minus. So if yes. you're putting a, a minus in the bank, whatever positive that you put is going to be, as long as it's, it's greater than, it's less than what is in the bank in terms of what you are owing. Yeah. Until you get to such point that it becomes more, you will be owing. Yes, yes, correct. You, 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 you need to know that minus 10, uh, you add minus 10 with minus 5, it gives you minus 15. So that's basically uh, what, uh, what, what, what is, what is uh, saying. What will the person do? We understand it, it decreases. When we're when we done with the question, will a memo be 
posted on Elite. Advocate, please repeat number four and five, please. I, I missed it. I, I, I see people are saying I must repeat number four and five, and I'm busy explaining number. What, what number was I explaining? Number five. No, the, the telegraphic transfer, that is the EFT. The EFT doesn't change. The way that you have done the EFT uh, while in your trust bank reconciliation, you're still going to record it exactly the same way. So the EFT, that is at number four. It doesn't change. The only time, what, what is going to happen is that the only changes that you are going to have are going, is going to occur in your bank reconciliation statement. In your supplementary cash book, nothing is going to change. The way you are recording your trust bank reconciliation is going to continue like that. Only in your bank statement, whatever you were adding, now you are going to less. And whatever you were lessing, now you are going to add. You're just going to do the direct opposite of what you were doing when you were doing your bank reconciliation statement. Now, let me, okay, I'll do that just now. Let, let us record this one here. We say, less bank error, debit, and we say, 2169. And then we say, subtotal. That means 81086 minus 2169. How much will be the, uh, the, the, the balance now that you owe the bank? 78917. 98917. 8917. That will be the balance that you owe the bank now. 78917. That's what you owe the bank after receiving that positive money into your account with a negative balance. That will be your subtotal now. That's what you owe the bank now. And then number six, a trust payment of 7301 has been incorrectly paid by the bank from your business account. That is that bank error again. And we are saying a bank error can only be fixed in our bank statement. Now, this is an error again that happened. We are owing... Uh, uh, Jabulo, no, not Jabulo, Sipo, CB, please switch off your camera. Sipo, just switch off your camera, thank you. Uh, now, what we are saying there at number six, we say a trust payment of 7301 has been incorrectly paid by the bank from your business account. Now we are saying that payment should not have been paid out of this business account. The reason we've got so big uh, overdraft is because of that money being paid out of this business account. Now the question is, the bank now acknowledges they made a mistake and the bank is reversing that transaction. When the bank reverses this transaction, what happens to the overdraft? Is it gonna go up or down? Down. 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 Yes. Let's go in south. <laughs> gonna go up. No, less. It's gonna go down. You are receiving money. 7301. You are receiving that money. The bank is paying it back into you. So less that bank error trust transaction. 7301, say less. And then you say 78917, less 7301. How much will be your balance now? 71616. 71616. That is how you record that uh, bank error. Less bank error, trust transaction, and then 7101, and then the balance there.
going to be 71616. A deposit of 5317 has been incorrectly entered in your cash book as 5173. Now we all agree that the firm has made an error because we assume that that is a firm error, isn't so? Yes. That is a firm error, and because it's a firm error, it can only be fixed in your supplementary cash book. Firm error to be fixed in your supplementary cash book. Therefore, deposit adjustment. That's a deposit that we have received, isn't so? Yes. Therefore, you're going to adjust that deposit. Now, remember uh, the value appearing in your bank statement is the correct one. Therefore, it says the deposit of 5317 has been incorrectly entered in your cash book as 5173. Now, the question is, which value are we going to record in our supplementary cash book? 5317. 5317. Do we debit or credit? Debit. 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 We debit it because it's what is being received, correct? 5317 must be deputed on your supplementary cash book, and then 5173 must be credited. Yes. 5173 must be credited. Excuse me, Advocate. Yes. After this question, are we anticipating to do another one or the class is pending? We will do another one. We still have time. Okay. And we are supposed to finish at 20 hours? No, no, we're supposed to finish, uh, I think, nine. 21 hours, ma'am. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Advocate? Yes. This is a 2 8. On the bank reconciliation statement, why yes. do, on the bank errors, how, why do we say less if the bank is going to be giving that money to us? Because as soon as the bank gives you that money, what happens to the overdraft? I know the overdraft decreases, but on the narration, isn't it then giving you money? So shouldn't it be add? It's supposed to be to say what add. That's what I'm asking. No, because when you say add, and then you take that value, you add that amount, and then that overdraft is going to be more. While in actual fact, the overdraft should be less. That's why we, it should be lesser. That's why we use the word less. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Look, uh, and maybe I need to clarify this with you. Your class start at five until what time? Is it eight? Until eight. 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 Is it eight or twelve? Eight, eight, but yes. eight. 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 The well, emails we received, yes, they uh, said uh, 5 advocate, to 8. I believe, advocate, according to the email they sent, it ends at 8. On the first day, we went on until 9 because we started late. That was accommodated. Oh. And continuing with the schedule of the week, we can't be in the class until 9. I don't know if other people are comfortable, but uh, it's, 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 it's too long to be in the class for four hours. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, mine, mine tells me it's nine, but let's quickly then finish this up and then we can release everybody. Thank you. Okay. Okay, now the, the subtotal there is 71616. Now that was, uh, that was number, oh, we, have been, we just finished recording number seven. Now let's go to number eight. Sorry, advocate. Yes. The narrations, uh, your narrations in terms of your. I, I just wrote it as deposit adjustment. Okay, so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now let's go to number eight. EFT payments total in 6432 have not yet been presented to the bank for payment. Now these are the EFT, uh, the payment. The EFT payments. Now they say they have not been presented to the bank for payments. Now let's assume, let's assume that this uh, 
this payment now is paid as per your instruction by the bank. By the time the bank pays this amount, the bank will, you are owing the bank 71616. Now, if the bank pays this amount of 6432, what happens? You are overdraft. It increases. It increases. It increases. It increases. Correct. Therefore, you're going to add that uh, outstanding payment. Add outstanding payment. Add outstanding payment, 6432. Advocate. Okay. I'm so sorry. Can you please repeat that? Yes. What I'm saying is that this is a payment that you are making. Now, you are instructing the bank to pay the 6432 on your behalf. But the problem is you already owe the bank an amount of 71,616 rand. Now, what I'm saying is as soon as the bank pays this amount of 6432 on your behalf, what happens to your overdraft of 71,616 rents. Oh, it increases. It's going to increase because now money is going out again. And because it increases, the narration there, you must write add that outstanding payment because you're going to add it to increase the overdraft. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Now you say, 71616 plus 6432. How much do you get? 78048. 78048. That is your subtotal. That is your subtotal. And I'm going to put it again here on the screen. That is in your bank reconciliation statement. That is in your bank reconciliation statement. Now, number nine. Ashu Wanaari. Ashu You can see, guys. Add outstanding uh, payment. To the rights, please. And then the, then the balance there of 78048. Okay. Now, number nine. A deposit of 10,000 Rand is not reflected on the bank statement. This is the deposit, Emma, correct? This is a deposit of 10,000 Rand. And when you receive this deposit into this account with an overdraft, the overdraft is going to go down. That's why Emma says you are going to say less. And that is correct. That is in your bank statement. Then less outstanding deposit less outstanding deposit of 10000 rands less outstanding deposit of 10000 rands yes yes uh, yes yes pinar that's correct use the brackets to show that uh, 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 that negative balance, correct. Now, 78048 less 10,000 rand, how much is the balance now? 68048. 68048. 68048, correct. Now, let's go into our, the last one there. An EFT payment for 2930 has been incorrectly recorded in the cash book as 23. Nine zero. Again, here we are going to do the adjustment, isn't so? Yes. Mm -hmm. We are going to do the adjustment. Earlier on, we dealt with the uh, deposit. Now we are dealing with the EFT uh, uh, payments that we need to adjust. EFT. We're going back to the supplementary cash book. Yes, we're recording the supplementary cash book, and then it uh, has been equally written in the cash book. Which value do we record on the credit side of our supplementary cash book? 2930. 2930, which is the bank statement value. 
and then the 2390 must be recorded on the debit side. A negative balance. Remember, I said you should not put a negative Sorry, on your card. Yes. You said which amount um, do we put on the debit side? Okay, I'll explain it to you just now. Let me uh, turn this message. It's going to disappear now. Jonathan, what I was saying is that you can't add it because you've got a negative balance and you are not allowed to add a, a minus on your on your on your calculator. You just write. 78048. Therefore, you are forced to say less because you are receiving 10,000 rand into the account that has got, already has got a negative balance. And for that reason, that's why we say less. But if you put a negative, then you'll be forced to say add. So, that, but unfortunately, in your in your course, they don't want you to show in those negative, they just want you to do it exactly that directly the way that we are doing it. Okay. Uh, Prof, now, le, le, less, less is reduced. So you're reducing your... Your overdraft, yes. Your overdraft. Yes, yes. Genevieve, please, you can unmute yourself. Advocate, sorry. Um, just regarding the um, deficits and adding, usually like on a bank statement, it would have a negative balance. So um, I know that we shouldn't write the negative on the bank reconciliation statement, but if we had to write less, that would mean we'd need to um, subtract. But if it's already in deficit and indicated in brackets, then wouldn't we still need to add the 10,000? Because if you add, it would obviously reduce. No, if you, if you add, yes, it's going to reduce, but provided you put a negative on your calculator. Yes, advocate. So if yeah. we use our negative on our calculator, so would it be correct if we put the detail as add deposit? I still got all the same amounts that you did. I just wanted to check that discrepancy. Yeah, that, that's what I said earlier on uh, Jonathan to say, if you do it in the way that you, 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 you're saying you do it, that's basically, you realize that that's basically how they will do it normally in, in, in a normal accounting. Yes. So then they, they will do it in that way. And you, you're still going to come to the same balance that you are going to come when we do it the way that we are doing it. So what I indicated earlier on was that, unfortunately, the, the Legal Practice Council, they want to see these changes from your, uh, what do you call it, from your trust bank account with a positive balance to your overdraft balance. So they want to see these changes in terms of narrations, wherein where you were adding, now you are lessing, and where you were lessing, now you are adding. So they are mostly interested in that narration other than the end product that you are going to get here. Okay. Because what I always say, what you are saying is not incorrect, it's totally correct. But unfortunately, in terms of the Legal Practice Council, they concentrate a lot on their certain things that they want to be done their own way. Sometimes I also don't understand why they want that specific way, but they, that's how they want you to, to record it. Thank you, much appreciated. So we'd basically just apply the opposite then? Yes, just apply the opposite, correct. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, the amount, what I was saying there on the last transaction, back to your question, we say that an EFT payments of 2390 has been incorrectly recorded in the cash book as 2390. Now, we are saying this is a payment, and because it's a payment, in your cash book, a payment will be recorded on the credit side. But on the credit side of our cash book, we have recorded the wrong amount, which is 2390. Now, because the bank statement amount is the correct one, we take that bank statement value, which is 2930, we are going to credit our supplementary cash book with that correct amount which we should have initially recorded on the credit side we still record it there and now we say that incorrect one that they say is reflecting on the on the credit side we must write it back to the debit side that is why uh, that is why 
uh, you will see there on the answer I said EFT adjustment on the credit side. I wrote two nine uh, uh, three zero, and the other one I wrote two three nine zero. That is your supplementary cash book there. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Now that was the last transaction. Now I want us to try and balance uh, this two account and see if we will balance. Now remember this is an overdraft statement and therefore it will tell you the credit side of your supplementary cash book will always be more. Now let's add together the credit side. 6472 plus 8389 plus 1809 plus 713 plus 2930. How much is the total? 83735. 83735. 83735. 83735. Okay. Now, the 8373 minus the debit side. Minus the debit side. And tell me how much the balance. 68048. 68048. And then you go into your bank statement and say balance or overdraft balance. Overdraft balance as per cash book. Overdraft balance as per cash book. That is your bank reconciliation statement then you will see the overdraft balance um, as per cash book 68048 and then you go here in your supplementary cash book also the balance there 68048 sorry um sorry i took it uh, yes that's a quick question um I have already balanced both my cash book, uh, business cash book, uh, and the bank reconciliation. Yeah. I would just like to know, in in our bank reconciliation, you stated that we may use brackets to show that it's in the negative. Yeah. May yes. we the in the business cash book at the end the balance that's bro we, that we're going to bring over to next month? May we indicate that as well in brackets? Yes, you can indicate it in brackets also, yes. No okay, problem. thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, okay. Okay, any question again? Um, yes, Advocate, is there for tomorrow's lesson team that um, the lesson team... Uh, your, is there's something now. wrong with their voice there from your side? I can't hear you clearly. Hello? Yes. Um, yes, I'm asking for tomorrow's lesson. Is there any questions that we can actually prepare for ourselves then tomorrow? We can actually correct. We can correct the, the question that you kind of put your eyes to do on our own. We can't hear. Bungil, we can't hear you. Uh, you know what, what, what I require, yeah, there is a, there's a problem with sound from your side. Can you quickly put it on the chat there? If I um, can that correctly, I think she is asking if can you tell us what you're going to be discussing tomorrow so people prepare it before and maybe we quickly run through it. Okay, 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 okay. Dr. Uh, Mukwena, you are correct. You are correct. That's correct what you have indicated there. And then... Tomorrow, I want us to do what you call the conveyancing section. I want us to do the conveyancing. And uh, you will see that your conveyancing, I believe, is about chapter 9 on your, on your manual. But before that conveyancing, you will see you've got a number of chapters there dealing with your investment, your journals, your ledgers, your, uh, your, 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 your VAT and all those other things. So you can go through those and read them if you've got time. But if you don't have time to read them, you will not have to worry yourself too much because I will be 
taking you through everything. So I'll discuss everything as and when um, I will be doing what do you call. I will be doing your uh, your convincing. So please uh, have enough script where you are going to write. Make sure you also bring your own calculator. It's very much easier for you uh, to understand and to remember even later. So when we do the calculations and then you are doing them yourself, other than just taking the answers. So please bring enough script where you're going to write the number of accounts that you're going to deal with and bring your calculator so that uh, uh, you don't get confused. Yes, Parker, past uh, question paper are going to help a lot, but you will see tomorrow when we deal with these things, more especially on the basis that the check has been uh, phased out. Uh, unfortunately, most of you in the previous past exam paper, you will come across those uh, checks and which you have to uh, uh, transfer them into being the EFT payment. So you, you, you go, just going to come across that uh, minor confusion, but uh, I will try to assist you so that you can see how you deal with the EFT payments instead of those checks that you will see that will be mentioned a lot in your previous uh, board exam, which, are no, which we are no longer dealing with because of the checks being phased out. But your previous question paper, yes, uh, they will assist you. And uh, uh, Parker also indicating here, yeah, they are also on the, uh, on the, what you call, on the lead uh, website. Those question papers, I believe you on the lead, yes, you will find those question papers on the lead website. So if you want them, go to the lead website, lead website uh, and then you will find, you will find them there. Uh, Marushka, I see you. Uh, you have your question there. Is it the same question that I uh, saw late earlier on? Yes. Let me see here. My roof. Um, eight, seven, six, eight, zero, four, eight, six, eight, zero, four, eight. Okay, may I ask a quick question? Um, yes, you, you can. You can. I'm just going to try to see something here. I just wanted to find out, Advocate, maybe it's not to my knowledge. I just wanted yeah. to find out if I'm going to get a memo of these questions that we have been uh, dealing with so that we, it can also help us prepare for the exam. Look, what, what happens is that what, what normally used to happen is that we we were not allowed to give the memorandum at all to students because they are, their concern was that if we give you a memorandum, you simply study questions and memorandum and then most of the time the same question comes in the exam and then you get total, while on the other hand you don't understand the course. So they adopted that style of saying, uh, teach what you can teach in the class, whatever exercises remain, give students an opportunity to uh, exercise themselves. But what, what, what I've seen, which is something that we need to speak to them again, what I've seen from uh, things beginning of this year, uh, if, I, if I'm right, uh, if not beginning of this year, somewhere during the course of this year, in terms of the uh, the past question paper, they have put them on the website and they also put the memorandum. So we need to approach them and say, it doesn't help you saying we should not prepare the memorandum, but you uh, you are you are giving them the memorandum. We rather as well also give them a memorandum.